Yeah. Don't forget, uh, poinsettias, they'll kill your animals. Yeah, that's true. It's Sports Center with Jane Dan on Canada's number one specialty channel. So let that sink in. Yeah, think about that for a second. Uh, our show is brought to you by Tim Hortons. We're thrilled that you're here. It's that camera. The jib sweeps in front of me, and then I always get confused. I remember we talked a bit about the, the Leafs. They played a 2 o'clock game on Wednesday. On Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, on, uh, on Thursday. And today, what's Wednesday? Today is Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. This anyway. is Dan O'Toole with the days of the week. <laughs> On Wednesday, Leafs played again. This one, 8 a.m. Yeah, it's, it's a weird switch. But again, I like the idea of a morning game, except <laughs> when we're on, on TSN 4 and 5 in the morning. Uh, they were in Columbus. So back-to-back yeah. -back, uh, games for the Leafs in back-to-back -back days. That was our smoothest intro to any show we've ever done. Yeah, I apologize. Come on, when you get older, the days just all blend into one. Late first, end of a Leafs power play. Seth Jones steals from William Nylander. Oh, he's going the other way. He's keeping, he's surveying his options. Score! Jackets up a pair after one. Second frame, great play by Nylander to keep the puck in. Keeps, then feeds Jake Gardner. Third of the season. Leafs are on the board. Connor Carrick cannot keep the puck in. The Jackets, they've got a two-on-one. Alex Wenberg scores. Jackets take a four-to-one lead. Three minutes to go in the third. Mitch Marner, he's coming off his first career four-point night, picks up the puck in his own end. Okay, he's got speed. He's uh, dancing through. He's gone! They're scoring just twice in his first 34 games. Marner's got goals in back-to-back -back contests. Leafs within two, under two minutes to go. Marner, this almost looks like a repeat performance. It's the zone with a ton of speed, stopped. Marner sticks with the puck, picks it up in the slot, dinner. Leafs fall, 4-2. Thought tonight we answered the proper way, and it wasn't with our mouths, it wasn't rah-rah, it was about playing, and, and I thought we played hard. I thought we were harder to play against, and we certainly were above the puck a lot more than we have been the past three or four games. That is what you call product placement by Tim Hortons. The Leafs are in the midst of playing eight of nine on the road. That one exception is the 8-1 beatdown of the Canes on Tuesday afternoon. Toronto, they've lost their first four road games in the stretch, and their next four are on the road against the Rangers, Yokes, Avs, and Golden Knights. Calgary coming off a 6-1 win over the Canucks Sunday, hosting the Blues on Wednesday. Meanwhile, Johnny Gaudreau, one goal in his last eight, tough first, blocks the shot, wincing. Few shifts later, takes a high stick from Vince Dunn. No call on the play. Gaudreau not happy. Really second Blues man advantage, Braden Shen. Season he is having. Saskatoon zone. Sniping it past Mike Smith. Seven goals in December. Only Anders Lee of the Isles has more. He has eight in December. Vladimir Tarasenko shoots after the whistle. Flames don't like that. And here we go to... It's a little skirmish. In the end, after all of this, just two minor penalties handed up. That's good refereeing. That's how it should be. His fourth of the season gives Calgary the lead, and that's where we stand in the third. Team Canada's World Junior Checklist is filling up. Get uniforms for all the players. Check. Invite players to try out for the team. Check. Pick a team. You got check there. Get that team to bond. No check mark there yet because that is where pre-tournament games are for. Canada and the Czech Republic meeting in the Forest City Wednesday night. That would be London, Ontario, the Forest City. Canadians have won gold just once over the past eight years at the World Juniors. Uh, they're taking on the Czech Republic. Canada takes it 9-0. Thomas was asked about his nerves playing in front of his hometown fans. Oh, definitely. I think going out, I had a, had a lot of adrenaline going through me, and 
uh, you know, anytime your fans are really loud like that, it, it really helps all the guys out. Dominic Ducharme, you slide him into Hollywood, he is your perfect character actor, right mm -hmm. there. Absolutely. Canada's second line of Boris Kachuk, Robert Thomas, and Tyler Radish put on a clinic against the Czechs. Uh, Taylor, did I say Tyler? Taylor Radish, yeah. Raptors win of three straight, taking on the Hornets. Serge Ibaka had a really good game. Less than a minute after that, Ibaka, he had a season high 24 to go with five rebounds. DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry combined for 66 points in the Raps win over Charlotte in November, second quarter. DeRozan, baseline, and then the reverse. He had 10 in the first half. And then DeRozan off a screen to Lowry, who had just 11 in this one. All of them came in the first. Still in the frame, DeRozan to Ibaka. DeRozan with eight assists in this one. And after the play, and I love this, DeRozan and Lowry talking strategy, talking technique, always learning, like Dan and myself in commercial breaks. Raps put up 41 in the second quarter. OG and Inoki, the Rook, getting in on the act in the third corner three. Uh, basically watched the fourth quarter. And afterward, after this victory, DeRozan asked about Anunoby. Did you know OG was this good a shooter, and, and how much do you trust him now? No, we did not know he was this good of a shooter. Me and, me and Cal nick, nicknamed him uh, Ray. We called him Ray Allen. Uh, uh, Miami Ray, though. Sports Center with Jane Dan will return. We're back. Andre Sekera expected to make his season debut for the Oilers on Thursday as they host the Blues. Sekera has been inactive for seven months for the torn ACL. At least several media outlets, including USA Today and The Ringy, have suggested that it's Houston and not the LA Lakers that may have the best chance at LeBron when he becomes a free agent next summer, with the potential to form as The Ringy. He described it, this super team to end all super teams. And why wouldn't he want to join Houston? 14-game win streak, averaging nearly 120 points during that win streak. But before the game, P.J. Tucker said, in times like this, when you let your guard down, teams that are probably not supposed to beat you are the ones that get you. Foreshadowing. They're taking on the Lakers. They're looking shaky early on. James Harden, Lakers dishing to Tariq Black, 4-8 Brewer, the steal, taking it the other way. Houston's last loss back on November the 14th against the Raptors. Chris Paul averaging nearly 19 points over the win streak. Air ball. He'd later leave with what the team called a sore left knee. James Harden, likely your leading MVP candidate right now. Blows by Julius Randle, gets the Florida to go, and then later Randle tasked with guarding Harden again. Harden so good with Randle in his grill. Kyle Kuzma <laughs> misses the layup, goes down hard. Right to your screen, Lonzo Ball goes to help him up. Hits a wet patch, takes a spill. They'd be okay. Slipping and sliding everywhere. Ball would make up for it later, though. Harden a chance to give Houston the lead. It's Ball the for rejection, massive block. At the other end, Ball. He had 16 on the night. It's the Lakers snapping the Rockets. 14 game win streak. Harden had 51 points to the lock. Intriguing losses. How about the Minnesota Timberwolves? Butler had a team high 25. Andrew Wiggins is out of December to forget. The Canadian shooting a career low 37%. In the final month of 2017, here the floater, it'll drop, and the foul. Canadian, Canadian. Another Canadian, Jamal Murray. He's from Kitchener. Taking the feet from Miles Plumley. Drains the tray and the harm. Four-point play, under two to play. Murray drives, gets the friendly roll. Canadians taking over the NBA. 45 seconds left. Murray on Butler, needing a stop. Butler had a game high 30. No, Murray had a game high 30. It was the T-Wolves who got the win. 
That makes more sense. Uh, once again, we're sponsored by Stockton's Stocking Stuffers. Stocking Stuffers, they're easy. Toothbrushes and body wash. What? And a uh, magazine. Are you in the army? <laughs> hey, it's official. The Islanders' bid to build an arena at Belmont Park has been selected by New York State. The proposal includes an 18,000-seat arena, a hotel, retail space. Impending free agent John Tavares spoke about how the deal might affect his decision this coming offseason. John? John! He's not going anywhere. He's staying right there. Uh, we have a, uh, an Islanders insider. says, great location, close to two train lines. That's where you want to be. You want to put your rink close to a couple of uh, public transit lines. Make sure people... Because that Barclay Center, that was a disaster. Yeah, there's no parking. Not, it's hard to get in. Ba bad sight lines uh, were horrible. It was really built for basketball. It was built for the Nets. Um, yeah, Tavares will be a, an unrestricted free agent July the 1st, if you haven't heard. Speaking of transportation, Team Canada, they played in London. They took the bus there. Uh, Here we go. This bus driver, keep them the whole way. He's like, guys, I don't care who's coming off. I'm getting back on. I forgot my mints. <laughs> hey, and get back. Let me get my mints. But, get but back to, there. I have to play. Don't care. The rest of the team stuck on the bus. That guy is bold. Put, bus put him drivers, behind the bench. Yeah. Bus drivers should be coaches. Yeah, they They've should. seen it all, yep. and they have to be parents, they have to be guardians, mm -hmm. they have to be leaders. Mentors, friends, um, they've got to clean the toilets, everything, just like every NHL coach. <laughs> Each week, we scan through hundreds of hours of player interviews in search of the most unique and funniest nicknames in the National Hockey League in a segment we like to call NHL Nickname Z. Yak's better, yeah. Well, Crow gives us the best chance to win a game. Benny did a good job of keeping us calm. Burnley will go in tonight. I could hear Cass. Talbs is getting awfully close. It's good to see Talbs between the pipes. You know, he's with sharp people. We've got Rasker, Skinny, and Turbo. But Rusty's always uh, there when we need him. And I think that's when Rusty's at his best. Barzy's obviously a fast-first kind of guy. You know, Darrell's in tough circumstances. Well, Krugs gets tossed out. Dolly's last game in San Jose was really, really good. One thing with Juice. You know, guys like Juice were creating. Carly. Niski was up in the play. Talk about Oz being in the same situation. Schneider's was huge. Greeny got one by him. Big win. Not sure, you know. You get a chance from Z there. You come to expect that from Schmaltz. Panza hasn't played for... I thought Backy's line was really, really good. Akuzi's line was good. Jimmer, Bowen, Bernie. I like Bernie's game. Buda came up huge for us there at the end. Spurge has been cleared to practice. Gotta expect that from Schmaltzy. We all do. So here are the results after week 11 of NHL nickname Z. 57% E, 22% S. Err, a surprising low amount there, 11%. Uh, Spurge. Coming in hot at three. This has been NHL Nickname Z, and you're welcome. For the Montreal Alouettes, last year, disaster. Uh, fist fights among teammates in a CFL worst 3 and 15 season. That ended with an 11 game losing streak mm. Wednesday. Brought the latest shakeup with the hiring of new head coach Mike Sherman. And for Sherman, the mission's pretty straightforward. We have to get better than what we've been. And so there's a well, from my standpoint, a major push to how can we make this roster a stronger roster. Um, you know, there, there were some times I, on tape that I, that I, I didn't think we tackled very well. I didn't think we were physical enough. And at times, not passionate enough. We need more, more passion. Coach Sherman is a man with tremendous character. He's an exceptional football mind with a passion for teaching. He's an innovator that understands the process. Coach is a proven winner. One of my strengths is developing players, uh, taking a, uh, a C-list player and making them a B-list player and a, and a B-list into an A-list player. And if you're a Packer fan, you remember when Mike Sherman was your coach and GM from 2000 to 2005. It's amazing because, you know, Mark Tressman, June Jones having yep. all the success. So, you know, maybe this will work out. And he's a proven winner. 59 and 43 as head coach of the Packers. I want this to work. The, the, the Owls being good is good for the CFL. No Christmas yeah. season is complete without the Janney Awards. And we are going to fulfill your holiday wish list next on this television program. It's called Sports Center with Jane Dan.
on Canada Sports Leader. It's weird when I smile, it sounds like you're opening a door or something. A door to my brain. Tim Hortons drive through of the top stories of the night. The Leafs lost to Columbus on the road. Fourth straight loss on the road. No Austin Matthews once again missed his sixth game. Mitch Marner, Jake Gardner had the goals for the mm, Buds. Flames held on for a 2-1 win over St. Louis. Dougie Hamilton scored the game winner with under eight to go in the third. Calgary has now won back-to-back -back games. After, that's the game winner right there from Dougie after losing three straight. Team Canada began their pre-tournament play with a pretty convincing 9-0 win over the Czech Republic. Carter Hart stopping all 18 shots he faced. Robert Thomas scored once, had three helpers. Taylor Radish scored twice, had two assists. Every Boxing Day for me begins the same way. I begin by apologizing to my family for the things I said to them the evening before. Then we gather around the tube and watch Canada take on Finland. The 2018 World Juniors begin boxing. Guess what? The Rays traded Evan Longoria to the Giants for Christian Arroyo, Denard Span, and a couple minor leaguers. Longoria, he was the face of the team. Spent his entire 10-year career with Tampa. He's the franchise leader in games played and home runs. Longoria had five years and $86 million left on a six-year, $100 million contract. And Orioles closer Zach Britton expected to miss at least six months to rupturing his Achilles during a workout on Monday. After a 47-save season in 2016, Britton pitched in just 38 games last year because of injuries. And Dan, did I mention that TSN has live coverage of all 28 World Junior games? Did I mention that? I don't think I did. And I want to make sure I do. Very important stuff. Brandon Bridge signed a one-year extension with the Rough Riders. The Jannies. <laughs> That's a timely reference. Canada, Czech Republic. Maxime Comtois. We'll finish it off. Maxime Comtois. Anaheim Ducks prospect. How about Vince Carter? Putting on a show before his Kings face the Nets. It's a pair of trick shots from behind the baseline. I love this. Walks away. Look at that. Vince Carter played in the first year that the NBA had games. Half man, half amazing. Here's Dan's favorite professional basketball player. <laughs> oh my goodness. Russell Westbrook. Come on, man, that's wrong. I want him to adopt me. More from the Jazz and Thunder. Westbrook finds Paul George. Now that's a reality show I'd watch. Just him dressing you every day. <laughs> Put you in all these weird outfits. Sign me up. Daddy? You're buttoning your short sleeve shirt all the way up to the top. Leafs jackets. Mitch Marner. This is a nice goal. He's playing real well. Mitch Marner. Very well spoken for such a young man. Much like a young Dan O'Toole. That's when he came out of Algonquin College. Marlins fans are not happy with the new regime in Miami. That would be Derek Jeter and company. And now they have someone else to take out their frustrations on. Billy Marlin, the mascot. Since Derek Jeter and the new Marlins ownership group took over the team, they have dismantled the roster. So they try to slash payroll. Well, as you can expect, it's not sitting well with the few fans that Miami has. Oh. Marlins man was in attendance for Derek Jeter's town hall on Tuesday, and he spent nearly six minutes giving the new Miami owner an earful. Oh, I am. I do. I've heard you. Good. That's a good thing. I'll give you whole history. At one time, I had 20 season tickets. The last two years, I had 10. This year, I have none. I have not renewed. The Marlins man has not renewed. Okay? But I want to hear from you that you're going to be loyal to us if we stand by you now when you're down. So when you get up here, you remember who was there for you. I've been there for 24 years for this team. I don't know many people who have. Great audio. Couple of things. Marlins man, he needs to wear more flattering shirts.
He's not as heavy as he looks on TV. No, he's really slimmed down. He's slimmed way down. Uh, he's got to dial back on the Marlins jerseys. So it's going to be a good season for baseball in Miami. Yes, yeah, it always is. LeVar Ball said Wednesday he plans on launching a basketball league for players who have graduated high school but don't want to go to college. Ball added that his junior basketball association will be funded by Big Baller Brand. They also plan on plan on paying players as low as $3,000 a month and as high as $10,000. What LeVar didn't say is how he was actually going to start and operate his league, but that didn't stop him from releasing this video hyping his new league while still covering himself legally. Finally, LeVar Ball is creating a place to let ballers be ballers. Reportedly, though, not confirmed. Financial details not disclosed. The Junior Basketball Association. Not officially registered as league name. A league, a lifetime in the making. Initial concept less than two weeks old for ESPN.com. With the best players in the world. LaMelo Ball, only player reportedly confirmed. Ten cities. Venue rentals not secured at time of announcement. Ten teams. Team names and trademarks not verified. For ten grand a month. Pending third-party financing agreement. The Junior Basketball Association. Reportedly. It's happening. Not confirmed does happening tickets on sale now ticket price is not set and not available by the way good, the good logo sell. the logo for the league is a silhouette of lonzo as it should be uh, ball said the rules of his league will follow those of the nba instead of college so a pro three-point line 12 point 12 minute quarter it's not happening and the show's moving that's right, we're going to be working Sunday, check. Monday, check. Tuesday, check. Wednesday, check. Thursday, and then we're off Friday, Saturday. That's starting in the new year. 1v1, new slogan for Ram, proven to last. Pretty good stuff there. Uh, so we have a new, a new champion, okay? I said it would for sure be Dmitry Orlov from Tuesday. Let's find out who it was, but first let's find out who the challenger is. I have a feeling this will not defeat Freddie Anderson. Made this nice paddle save. He's your new champ. Just, Robbing Jeff Skinner. Just give him it for the jersey alone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, TSN.ca slash 1v1. Voting opens at 2 a.m. Eastern. Voting uh, Our winner will be revealed Thursday, 6 Eastern edition. Uh, I believe Lindsay Hamilton is hosting this week. Rod Smith taking a well-deserved week off. Uh, you blew it. We pointed our errors off the top of the show. I forgot what day of, week, uh, day of the week it was. I thought it was Thursday all day on Wednesday. Yeah. And um, this is an interesting thing. Not so much that you blew it. It's more we're praising uh, the good folks at the Columbus Blue Jackets because their product placement for our friends at Tim Hortons is absolutely impeccable. And I have to say, that is a gigantic mug of Tim Hortons coffee. Yeah, that, that's like an extra, extra large. You'd have to make that a quad quad. Quad quad. Jump, or as they say in Timmins, a jumbo four by four. That'll get you going. Oh. <laughs> I have two or three in the morning, and I feel pretty much, pretty much even for the rest of the day. Uh, on, uh, on Thursday? On, today, what's it, Wednesday? Today is Wednesday. Wednesday. Anyway. It's the days of the week.